Hey all geeks, welcome to another video. So today we will be talking all about vaccines, the different types of vaccines, each vaccine in detail along with their examples and a table for you to know all the different types of vaccines. So if you are interested in any specific type of vaccine, you can check the timestamps that I've given in the description below. Now, without much further ado, let's get right into it. So firstly, the types of vaccines. So the first type is a homologous vaccine. Now, what is a homologous vaccine? Basically, it is made from one microbe and is used against the infection of the same microbe. For example, cholera vaccine. Next one is the heterologous vaccine, where it is made from one microbe, but can be used against the infection caused by different microbes. Next, cellular vaccines. Basically, they make use of whole microbes. That is example polio vaccine. Then the subcellular vaccines are basically toxics, toxins and chemicals of the microorganisms that have been used. Before I go on, I would like to give a shout out to this person. I'll put it on the screen for recommending me to do this video. If you have any other requests, feel free to put it in the comments below. I'll try my best to make videos on those as well. Now, next one is basically the attenuated vaccine, which is made by reducing the virulence of a live organism. Next, inactivated vaccines that contain killed microbes. Toxoid vaccines, they are basically bacterial toxins, like example, the DPT. Then subunit vaccines, which contain either the polysaccharide or protein units. Recombinant vaccines, mixed or combined vaccines that can kill more than, that have more than one type of immunization agent. Example, the triple vaccine, DT, TAB vaccines. What are all of these short, short forms that I have used? You will come to know by the end of the video, so stay tuned. The next type is the freeze-dried vaccine. Basically, they are more solid than the liquid vaccines. And examples of these are the smallpox vaccine, PCG vaccine, yellow fever vaccine. Then we have the autogenous vaccine that is obtained from the patient itself. Then we have antiviral vaccines, which you are aware of many of the, like your uh, yellow fever virus vaccine, rubella, mumps, then antibacterial vaccines like the tetanus, whooping cough. And also we have the anti rickettsial vaccines, which include the epidemic and endemic typhus. Okay, next. These are the steps for the vaccine production. So seven steps, synthesis, isolation, purification, processing, capacitation, stabilization, and preservation. So synthesis, so basically the methods of synthesis that can be used are embryonated eggs, human cells, bioreactor, and rDNA technologies. Embryonated eggs are usually used for the influenza virus. Human cells are used for the cultivation of hepatitis A virus. Our DNA technology makes use of Haemophilus influenza type B. Okay, then you have to isolate, finally purify and process. Now, processing, depending upon attenuated or killed, the different processes are done. Capacitation is addition of an adjuvant. Finally, stabilization and preservation of the vaccine. Now, first type that we are going to do is the attenuated vaccine. Now, the attenuated vaccine basically is cultured to induce a mutation in the virus. So, it is a live virus who is weakened, whose power to cause disease is reduced. Since it is live, you do not need any booster dose. However, it is less stable and has a problem of reversion. The non-pathogenic, non-disease causing can get reversed back to causing the disease. It gives humoral and cell-mediated immunity. The examples of different vaccines is the measles vaccines, which is basically attenuated by growing on the duck embryo cells first 
and then passaging it on human cell lines. Okay. For mumps vaccine, again, second type of the attenuated vaccine, rubella, chicken pox, oral polio vaccine, that is the sabin. It is basically attenuated by growing it on monkey kidney epithelial cells. Next is the yellow fever vaccine. Seventh one is the BCG, which is basically the strain of Mycobacterium bovis that has been attenuated by growing it on high concentration of bile for 13 years. Followed by you have the typhoid vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine, which are all attenuated virus examples, vaccine examples. Then you have the killed vaccine or the inactivated vaccine. It is basically killed by heat of formaldehyde. Here the capsid is intact. Therefore, it gives the immunogenicity required to elicit the immune response. However, it doesn't contain any DNA and therefore it would not replicate in your cells. You will require a booster, booster dose since there is no replication of the virus. So you need to give a booster to again back up the immunity and finally the type of immunity obtained by using killed or inactivated virus is the humoral that is humoral immune response then you have the examples of these type of vaccines that is inactivated polio vaccine that is the injectable one salt that influenza typhoid cholera plague pertussis and rabies vaccines next is the purified macromolecular vaccines so basically here polysaccharides are used as an immunogen. So polysaccharide will elicit an immune response which will lead to the protection. Now these actually activate the B cells in the thymus independent manner. And therefore only IgM antibodies are formed and not IgG. And therefore it is not a lifelong immunity. No memory cells are produced because the T8 cells have not been activated. Now, in order to increase the immunogenicity, you can couple the pro polysaccharide with a protein molecule, thus making it more immunogenic and therefore it will elicit a higher immune response and there can be the B cell formation giving lifelong immunity. Okay, so that is about the purified macromolecular vaccines. Next is the recombinant antigen vaccine. Here, basically, they are prepared from proteins using genetic engineering. Recombinant antigen vaccine uses the cloning of DNA. And the first ever recombinant antigen vaccine made for animals was against the foot and mouth disease. And basically, what they did is they took the viral mRNA that produces this VPI surface antigen, converted it into the cDNA. This cDNA was then cloned into E. coli to get the vaccine. So the first ever recombinant antigen vaccine in animals was for the foot and mouth disease. Then second one that is used in man is the hepatitis B vaccine. And what does it use? It uses the viral envelope of the protein that is the HBS antigen along with the and then you clone it basically. Okay, the trait names on which this hepatitis B vaccine is available is Recombivax and Engerix. Okay, so first in animals, foot and mouth. Second is, and first in man, I can say, second type of vaccine is the hepatitis B vaccine. Then next of this type is the Shingles vaccine, which is sold under the trade name of Shingrix, which basically contains the GE antigen component. Then you have the HPV vaccine that uses virus-like particles, that is the capsid proteins, to elicit an immune response. They are sold under two names, that is Gardasil and Cervarix. The full form is human papilloma virus, which is responsible for causing cervical cancer. Then you have cholera that falls under the recombinant antigen vaccine. Finally, the recombinant vector vaccines they are basically inserted with a gene product of the antigen. Now, the way in which this vaccine is produced is you take the genes that encode the antigen 
that causes virulence of that particular pathogen and you attenuate you use a attenuated virus or a viral vector the vector can be a viral or a bacterial vector as well the commonly used vectors are vaccina virus attenuated polio virus adenovirus the bcg strain of mycobacteria and attenuated strain of salmonella so take the gene encoding the antigens of the pathogen and this vector which is basically the attenuated virus or bacteria now examples of vi of vaccines these are not approved yet but they have been trying to do it basically making an aids vaccine by introducing the hiv dna into the vaccina virus and the attenuated strain of s typhi engineered using genes of cholera synthetic peptide vaccines so basically they use polypeptide chains as antigen usually contains 130 to 150 amino acids only here a humoral immune response is elicited the examples are pancreatic cancer hepatitis b influenza diphtheria malaria and aids so these vaccines are available in this form then next you have the dna vaccine very important one it is produced by rdna technology how is it made so you basically inject the pathogenic dna that is in the form of this dna vaccine into the host the dna gets expressed and proteins are produced which are of the pathogen this elicits an immune response the different dna vaccines are the bird flu vaccine vaccine for west nile virus and multiple sclerosis now if you have come this far and i have provided you with more information please like my video and subscribe to my channel and lastly to help you out i have made a table putting all the important vaccinations so you can see that anthrax is an attenuated type of vaccine and the strain is attenuated by growing it at 42 to 43 degrees celsius it is effective against the anthrax disease bcg it is again i have told you attenuated either one on glycerol and bile potato medium or you can grow it in high uh, bile concentration so bile potato medium basically means that then it is affected against the tuberculosis sabin vaccine for it's the live attenuated vaccine which is given in the oral form and it has three doses salk is the injectable form of the vaccine and it is basically a killed vaccine which uses a formalin chemical to kill the particular polio virus then measles vaccine it is an attenuated type and it is effective against measles which is given as a single injection for people between the age of 9 months to 10 years so given to kids then influenza virus vaccine this is again a formalin killed type of vaccine so inactivated and it is effective against influenza however the Im immunity to this is very short-lived that is six months and that is because this virus tends to mutate a lot next is the tab vaccine which is a heat killed vaccine and it is effective against typhoid and paratyphoid now very important point it is a prophylactic vaccine that is it's given to prevent against this enteric fevers pertussis vaccine killed again using formalin it is effective against the bacteria causing whooping cough tetanus toxoid formaldehyde detoxicated tetanus toxin is used so it's a toxoid then diphtheria toxoid again formalin treatment of the toxin now whooping cough tetanus and dpt these three are given as one injection that is the dpt injection which is given basically all three together as three doses of 0.5 ml intramuscularly they these three doses should be given at an interval of four to six weeks also a booster dose is needed at the age of 16 to 24 months so basically not at the age of 16 to 24 months after the three doses here then the booster is given within 16 to 24 months okay and the tetanus toxoid is actually a prophylactic vaccine so if individually given it is as a prophylactic vaccine it is given subcutaneously okay 
And that's it that I have for you. Another vaccine that is newly added is the mRNA vaccine for COVID-19, which is different. So if you want to know more about the different vaccines for COVID, you can check the I button or the link in the description. And that's it from me for today. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.